Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the next video about Maven. In this video, I'll explain what is the multi-module Maven project, how to create it, how to manage dependencies in this kind of project, how to import one module to another, and we'll take a look at what is the BOM file and how to use it. Okay, let's start. What is a multi-module project? It's just a project which consists of several smaller projects. Let's immediately move to practice and look how does it works. Here I have a simple multi-module Maven project and now we are at the root pom.xml file. Uh, further, I'll call it parent pom. So here we see some differences from pom files of my previous videos. Uh, the first difference is the packaging uh, with value POM. It means that the root project has no source code and the root pom.xml file is used to declare common configuration for all modules. The next differences, uh, difference is a modules block. Uh, this tag declares the paths uh, to folders of modules where their pom.xml files is stored. Uh, no, that is a path. We can uh, write it like here. Let's take a look at dependencies. Another model inherits configuration from parent pom.xml file or it also called reactor. Dependencies also inherited. So if we declare dependencies in reactor, every module will have this dependency in class pass and be able to use it. Uh, for example, here in the sub project one, I can use this common slang three dependency. Uh, it's showed in our main method. I use string utils from a common slang library and it is running perfectly. As you see, it's executed successfully. Moreover, you can specify some unique dependencies specific only to this module. For instance, in subproject two, we have tests and we need to specify gunit dependency to run them. In pom.xml file, we can uh, write the dependencies block with the dependency gunit. So here we have tests. Let's open this and let's run the first test, which shows us that the gunit library works correctly. On a real project, with a lot of modules, we will constantly face the situation when not all modules need a dependency, but just several of them. It's important to keep executable files of modules as much lighter as possible. It's hard to maintain dependencies that are defined in several modules. Because if you need to change the version of dependency, you will have to change every pom.xml file where this dependency declared. To solve this problem and to store all dependency configuration in one place, we have the dependency management tag. We can declare all dependencies with their versions, scopes and other configuration in reactor pom.xml file. Let me show it to you. Let's go to the reactor pom.xml file. Here I have a commented dependency management block. Let's uncomment it and it is with a gunit library. So for now, it will go to the pom.xml file of our sub project two and we'll comment the gunit library. And let's refresh the Maven and let me show you that test would not be able to run. Go to tests and here we see that uh, it cannot import the gunit library of course but, uh, because it's just not declared it's only declared in dependency management block but it doesn't mean that uh, it's in the sub project we can uncomment this block uh, we just write the name of dependency which we need and the artifact ID so it's coordinates without version just because the version is defined inside our dependency management block inside our reactor pom.xml file. Here we see its scope and version. If we refresh in the maven we will see that uh, our library was found successfully. So now we know what is a dependency management tag and what does it mean, how to work with it. 
the another variant to store all our version and scope and configuration information about dependencies in one place it's a bom file what is a bom bom is a abbreviation of a bill of materials bill of materials is a specific pom.xml file which is used to control dependency version of project simply it's almost like we declared a dependency management in our reactor pom but now we will do it in a separate file and import this file where we want distinctive feature of bom pom.xml file is that you can import multiple bom files whereas parent tag could be only one what is particularly useful on real project let me show you an example of bom pom.xml file I have it in inside a separate package. It's just a file with a specific coordinates, a packaging pom, and dependency management tag with declare dependency. I, uh, I added the same gunit file. Oh, let's go to our reactor pom file and comment our dependency management block. Okay. How does our subproject or our project will find our bomb pom file. To do this, we need to install our bomb pom XML file to our local repository from where it would be accessible in any our module and project. To do this, we need to open a terminal, uh, go to our specific package, it's a bomb example, and run the command mvn install. As we remember from previous videos, uh, this command will deploy our, oh no, this command will install our project to local repository. So here we have no end project, it will install only the pom.xml file. So, and for now, we can easily import our bom uh, to our project, to any of the modules. For example, to module two, because it's used, it uses the tests, which we added to the pom.xml file. Let's remove this dependency. It would not be work. And uh, let's uncomment this block with dependency management. You will see the dependency management, dependencies, and dependency on our uh, bomb example, uh, which we declared with uh, these coordinates and version. And also we have to write the type with bomb. It means that it's a bomb file and it has a special scope import. It's necessary for our BOM files. So when you will run any Maven phase, it will just replace this block on block from the POM.xml file. So all dependencies from here will be imported to our dependency management. So we will be able to edit via this type of declaration because we don't want to import all the dependencies from BOM file, it could be very large. We understand that there were no dependency management in our root project and we can refresh the Maven. Okay, it refreshed. Uh, go to the our tests file and we see that it works correctly. It sees a GUnit. And if we will command this, refresh the Maven, go to tests, we see that a GUnit cannot be imported from, because it doesn't know from where to get it. All we can uh, uncomment it, for example, and comment the dependency management block. So here you see, and refresh the Maven, uh, wait a couple of seconds, and also see that it uh, could not find artifact GUnit form uh, because it's unknown in central. Let me uncomment this block. Once time refresh the maven and see that everything is fine. We've learned what is a bomb, how to install it to the local repository, how to create it and how to work with it. Finally, I want to show you how to work with the module import, how to import one module to another. To do that, it would be enough to declare a special dependency it's shown in our second project. Here we see this dependency on our subproject one. We need to specify the group ID, the artifact ID of our subproject one from pom.xml file of this file of this module, and the version. It has the same version as the root project. 
so I, I'm going to show you that in the subproject one, I has a module, module one entity, which has a couple of fields, ID and description, and a written to string method. So, for example, I want to use this entity in my module two. As we have seen, I imported this project, and if I'll go to tests, I can use it by I can declare it, I can um, set fields and use it. Let me show you how does it work. We see that it's from com, uh, Maven basics, model, module one entity. Let's run this test and we see that it works fine. For now, let's go to pom.xml file and command this dependency. We command it, refresh the Maven, go to the test and we see that uh, Subproject 2 doesn't see this entity from our subproject 1. Let's return to pom.xml, uncommit it, refresh, go here, and we see that it works fine. When you import in module, remember that cyclical dependencies are forbidden. It means that now we can't import some project 2 to subproject 1. So let's try to do this. Let's copy this dependency, go to pom.xml pom .xml file of of subproject one, pass it here and print the subproject two, refresh the Maven. We will see the exception if we will try to start our module one pro application. And absolutely, we see that it has an error because we created the cycling dependency. So let's command it this dependency on the subproject two, refresh and rerun our module one application. I'm sure that everything would be fine. Yeah, code one means success. It's okay. Also, one thing which I want you to note that when you import in a module, dependencies with compile or runtime scope would be accessible from the current module, but the dependencies with other scope like tests or provided are not able to are not accessible from the other module. For example, here you see in subproject one, we have a Lombok library with provided scope. So if we, for example, will try to create a new class, a new class in the subproject two with name a module two entity, entity, and add some field, for example, it would be private string any field. Okay, and try to add the annotation getter from the Lombok. We see that there is no this annotation from the Lombok. It's from another library. We cannot use it. That's its wrong library. So if we need to do this, we need to use the library from the another project. We can just change the scope, for example, to compile. It's a default scope. And go to module entity 2. Let's remove this getter annotation. Let's try to import. And here we see the second uh, Lombok library. Gather works absolutely fine with our module 2 entity, even there is no dependency to Lombok in here anywhere. And we came to the end. Thank you for watching this video. Now you know how to work with the multi-module Maven project. I want you to have some practice. Uh, try to create a multi-module project by yourself. It will help you to remember everything faster. Hope you like this series of videos about Maven. Hit the like button and if you want to see more, make sure you down subscribe button. Have an awesome day. I'll see you once again in the next one.